Nico comes up by himself and he says, I didn't find them. And I'm like, you didn't find them. I'm just looking out and listening to Layla. What do you mean they can't be found? Yeah, they went on a, on a hike. They all come back up. They said, we didn't see them. I really wanted to leave my day job, and that's when I met Sebastian. I met him on OkCupid. We were dating. My intention was to get married. <laughs> so I ended up meeting him, and then he ended up recruiting me into the business. And so 2015 is when I started my business here with PHP. I met Seabass, it had to be 12 years ago. And uh, since day one, man, that guy was a spark of life, man. You know, full of energy big smile and he would just light up any room that he was in. I met Sebastian in Northridge, um, I don't know, he could have maybe, maybe 20, 21 years old. You knew that there was something there and I guess they knew as well because it wasn't too long after that where, you know, they started dating and then, you know, Layla hit marketing director and then they began to grow their business together. He was in a relationship, he got married at a young age. And I saw a young couple come to the office, and every now and then you meet young people that have a fight in them, and he had a fight in them as a role model, as an um, example to his family. So Sebastian and I were super excited because we qualified for a Hawaii trip. So he was super stoked because he was able to take his mom, we took my daughters, and we took three of our brokers, including Angelo, who was essentially celebrating his broker promotion because he had just become a broker. He was a passionate guy. He just wanted to go out there and do something special. Always showing up, great attitude, great energy, always learning. So you look forward to mentoring somebody like that. At that point, he, he definitely became a different person. In the office, I mean, he, he was so passionate that he would rub people the wrong way because he was very direct, he had no filters. He just had no filters, man. And he was just in your face, I wanna compete, I'm gonna beat you, and he'd back it up, he'd stand up, he'd fire up his team. And so he had just a special energy about him. And so I remember we were arguing a little bit at the beginning because I said, we just gotta go do the trip and come back. The day before the hike, Angelo, my brother-in-law, and Sebastian meet up with a girl and one of her guy friends. Sebastian asked her if she would take us to a hike where all the locals go. And so she said, sure. So the very next day, he ended up taking the girls. They were probably about 11 months at this point. So he took them to his mom, he gave them a kiss, and he said, so mommy and daddy are gonna go hiking and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tell you all about it. So we don't know where to go hiking and I just remember that Angelo texted, road to Hana. So she takes us there, she takes us to a couple different places and she says, it's gonna be a difficult hike, we're gonna have to climb ropes and it was really narrow. There were some parts that looked like you would fall off the edge of the mountain, so it was super muddy. So we all went down into the hike and when we got there, there was a waterfall and then it would lead off down into the ocean. So the girl and her guy friend take off and then Angelo, Nico, Sebastian and I stayed in the van and we shared our last meal together. And Angelo got to sit under the waterfall. And so he was like, bro, you totally missed it. It was so amazing. We've got to go back down. You've got to sit under the waterfall. And Sebastian was just sort of like, um, should I go? Should I go down? And I was like, I guess, I mean, you know, we're gonna leave tomorrow, it's your last opportunity. I didn't wanna go, I had a blister already, he was dry, it was, it was a very difficult hike. Even the firemen called it a black diamond level hike when they went back down. And so the two guys, Angelo and Sebastian, after we ate, went back down into the mountain and the last image I have of them is them walking in and we never saw them walk back out. So this is our final destination. This stream reaches the ocean. Layla made it! Nico! Look at all them crazies over there. That's our group too. Nico and I ended up falling asleep in the van. And then after we wake up, we look at the time and we're like, um, they've been gone for a little bit. So we're trying to do the calculations, you know, maybe 30 minutes down, 30 minutes back up, some sightseeing. So Nico said, how about you go down the mountain? Because there was zero reception where we were and, and you know, take the car and try to call the police or, and I'll go back down into the mountain. And I was so sure that I would come up with the firemen and they would all be 
out on the street. So I find some reception, bring the firemen, they all follow me all the way back up to where we were. After a, a bit, Nico comes up by himself and he says, I didn't find them. And I'm like, you didn't find them? And then I think like four firemen go back down with him. And now it's already like six or something in the evening. They all come back up, they said, we didn't see them. So first light is when the helicopters were able to do the aerial search. And that night, Coast Guard did come out to do some searching. I, I told Nico, I said, you're gonna have to tell your mom. So we went back down to the Airbnb and I took the girls, went to the room, and he had to go talk to his mom outside and give her the news that, you know, Sebastian's missing. Angela and Nico went all the way back to the mountain and stayed the night there, just in case they would walk back up. And they stayed out there the entire night. I think it had to be like 6.30 in the morning, 7 in the morning, and I get a call, and, uh, it's, and it's Layla, and she's just, a voice of terror over the phone, man. A voice of just complete terror and tears, um, you know, out of control, uh, crying. And she says, she, she just breaks it to me. She just says, we're, we're calling everyone for help, a rescue team, and then we'll, you know, we're gonna find out. Imagine not being able to find your, your husband and his best friend, Angelo. I was in shock and just praying for the best. That's all I could do, like, I would just pray, like, God, you know, make sure they're okay. The very next morning, around 6, 6.30, that's when the aerial search happened. About 20 hours later, they found Angelo. And I said, okay, like, he's alive, he's good, everything's okay. And he was like, no, he's not alive. And about 80% of the, you know, hope that I had that we would find Sebastian, completely dissipated. Man, the moment I, I heard the news, man, I think I broke down into tears. They kept searching for Sebastian, and um, the firemen were only allowed to search for about 72 hours. So we had the best of the best in Maui searching. We had um, STAT searching, we had Maui search and rescue, we had the firemen, like, we had the best of the best search team. And one thing about Sebastian, because I've been hiking with him in the mountains, he knows how to get back. So if he was able-bodied, he would have walked back up. If he was injured, they would have discovered him because they, not only did they have aerial, but they had people walking the land. We know a flash flood happened. It's tons and tons of water violently falling down. There's no survival. Water from the very top of the mountain, it cascades down one waterfall, another waterfall, this waterfall, 200 feet down into the ocean. And that's when they, they discovered Angelo's body, probably I think it was like a quarter of a mile or so, that way. And it wasn't until day four, I remember. I remember lying down on the bed and I just felt ton and ton of weight of stress just leave my body. And I just got this clarity that he's with the Lord, he's fine. It was a tough situation because I have my mother-in-law who's holding out hope, I have my brother-in-law, I have everybody, but I'm already at peace. I kind of know that he's not here anymore. And the experts were like, we've searched everywhere. The helicopter went all the way down to the bottom. There's nowhere that he could have been found. There's people walking. There's no caves where he could be hidden. And you've got to decide if he's in the ocean, how long do you want to keep searching? Marlene called and it was on a Sunday and she never calls me on a Sunday. And then she texts me, emergency, call me. And like I said, she never calls me on Sunday. So I, I pulled over and she said, um, Sebastian and Angelo are dead. I was like, what do you mean? She explained, you know, you know, what happened in the accident. And she says, do you know if they have insurance? And um, and I said yes. I was I was Sebastian's agent, but I'll, but I'll find out. Yeah, it was devastating, man, for our entire team, our entire office, our entire hierarchy, because everyone knew that thousands of agents know and loved these two guys. I pulled out my phone and started logging into the back office and trying to find out as much information as I could, um, so that you can give the family that information, you know, because even though. It doesn't make anything better at that time. It just, it allows you to know that that's not something that you have to worry about. You'll have that time to, 
to grieve. You don't have to go to work the next day. You don't have to worry about, you know, who's going to watch the kids. Um, you know, because when you have that money, you're able to forget about the financial part of the loss and you're able to just be with family. When Sebastian passed away and then immediately Jose called me and, you know, I was talking to Jose the whole time and Pat and Lorena and they figured they made sure that his life insurance was good, which it was. But um, that's when it really, really hit when, you know, when my landlord, I told my landlord, I said, hey, you know, I'm still in Hawaii. This happened. But the next month I can still pay my rent. I can still pay for the car. I would say Sebastian was probably the most sold out person to life insurance that I've ever met. Like he was super sold out from the very beginning. And so he had a policy and then he walked into the office and Lorena says, you're getting a policy. And he's like, I already have a policy. She says, you're getting another one. It's kind of what I did. I just went in his office. I'm like, hey, look, this is how much it is. Option A, option B, which one do you want? And uh, so, you know, we went from there and he says, I'd love for you to be my agent. So I said, okay. He said, because you got me to do it, I'll do it. And I was like, all right. You know, in the business, we always say, you're, the business will eventually go from the head to the heart. And so when Sebastian would go on the field, he would always say, this is your peace of mind. And whenever we pass away, or God forbid, or if I pass away, I know that my family's protected. And after he passed away, different people would come and talk to me. They would say, you know, he was so happy that he had life insurance and he, just felt so blessed and proud that he knew that if anything happened to him, that we would be protected. Life insurance is, it's a unique peace of mind. Uh, I, I think that sometimes people don't fear death or how or, or when. It's more of the what, what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen to my family? What's gonna happen to my kids? What's gonna happen to this house? When I would talk to clients and I would tell them, hey, you know, if God forbid anything happens to you, you know, you're going to be able to pay your bills, pay your rent. Life insurance policy will take care of that home you've always wanted to provide for your kids and give your spouse. That life insurance will take care of the vehicles that you have. The life insurance will take care of the income that you're providing for your kids. The life insurance will take care of your kids' um, private schools and their future. That's the power of what we do. So life insurance is really for anybody that is breathing, walking, that's alive right now. Life insurance is for you. I mean, Angela was 27 years old. Sebastian was 31 years old. Angela wasn't married. Angelo didn't have kids, but Angelo still believed in life insurance and he still got life insurance. You never know when something's going to happen. I could only imagine if I didn't have any coverage, I don't know, would I have moved in with my mom? Would have had to rush back and then, what would I be like just forcing a sale because I'm struggling for money? When this happened to me and I'm rushing back to work, the part of my head felt, felt like, honor yourself, honor your grief, honor what we do as a company, honor your husband. So when I was rushing back to work, I had to think, if I'm telling clients, hey, if anything happens to you, you get to grieve, and I'm not setting the example of grief, and I'm the person that sells it to you, it just didn't feel right. Yeah, I'm a life insurance agent. Yeah, I'm part of TGA. Yeah, I'm part of PHP. But I am a woman, I'm a widow, I'm a mom. There's that part of me as well. I have to honor that. I was a wife. You know, most people say, I don't need it. What do I need it for? You know, I'm not old. I'm not gonna, nothing's gonna happen to me. You know, that invincibility of, you know, 20 year olds sometimes. So many people just wait, they, they don't prioritize. You gotta be able to look at your, your children and your spouse and realize, man, how am I secure in the future? You know, by the time, you know, the policy came to pay out, you know, he was a new dad from a newlywed to a new dad with, you know, twins. You know, his family meant the world to him. And he, you know, he said, this is for my family. So I'm so blessed that my husband didn't leave us in debt or didn't leave us in a worse situation. My husband left us with a legacy. You should leave your family that way. You should leave them with a legacy, leave them in a better position. So I'm really blessed that um, Sebastian got recruited into life insurance, that he recruited me into the life insurance industry, and that he really, really believed in what we do and that he had it. So I remember one line that I would say, when you walk out of life, life insurance walks in, 
So I'm still able to have the life that Sebastian would want us to have, you know, because of what we do. And that's essentially what life insurance is. So my husband might not physically be here, but he left us a legacy. With the life insurance, not only can I just maintain my life, but financially these girls are going to be set because of the knowledge that I got from PHP about annuities, about products, about finances that I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for PHP.